there is no place for them to go during the day. We're it. A nonprofit helping those in need faces financial struggles. Why they need your help to stay open. Plus a downside to spending more times outside, an increased chance for poison ivy, oak, or sumac. A look at the common reactions and treatments for these poisonous plants. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on Virginia Today here on WSLS 10. I'm Jenna Zimton. And I'm Patrick McKee. And things soggy outside, but the rain not falling for most of us, but probably some fog because of the wet ground. Christina is here with a look at what we can expect. is not the child's father. New this morning, a West Virginia man could spend the rest of his life in prison in connection to multiple armed robberies across several counties. 31-year-old Joshua Berry pleaded guilty to several charges Tuesday. He's the last of three people charged in the case. Prosecutors say Berry and another man robbed the Abington Cinema Mall and the Marquis Cinema in Withville in April 2012. A month later, the two men robbed Eddie's Zip Foods in Mount Airy, North Carolina. The store owner was shot and killed. 503 BSLS 10. Well, sunscreen is essential with the ability to help protect us from skin cancer, painful sunburn, and wrinkles. May is National Melanoma Month, and throughout this month, we brought you summer sun safety tips that you can use. Today, we're talking about sun. Allergic skin reactions like poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac are on the rise. It's the oil in those plants that can cause a delayed hypersensitivity and bring people looking for relief. Now a rash will show up in one to three days. It can last up to three weeks. The intensity of the rash is dependent on how much oil you get on your skin and how long it's in contact with the skin. So if you wash it off with warm soapy water or uh, a mild dishwashing detergent actually is uh, very effective at getting it off the skin. A cold compress or calamine lotion will often make you feel better. Doctors may give you topical steroids or steroid pills. Now the old saying, leaves of three, let it be, is a helpful reminder for spotting poison ivy and oak. Poison sumac usually has clusters of 7 to 13 leaves. Stay away, it doesn't sound fun. be included in the final draft of the report. Roanoke Navy Week continues with several events today. This morning, Navy personnel laying a wreath at the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford. They'll also volunteer for Habitat for Humanity, give demos at Patrick Henry High School, and visit with kids at Carillion Children's Hospital. Lane closures could impact traffic tonight around Valley View Mall. Starting at 8 tonight until 5 tomorrow morning, the right lane will be closed on the off-ramp of exit 3C onto Valley View Boulevard from northbound Interstate 581. Crews will install signal pole arms. It'll be nice when all of that is completely finished and we can just drive. <laughs> and those same closures will be in effect again tomorrow night as well. A consumer is turning to the right. to see if it's secure or not. And you can hover over those and it will show you where it's going to take you to instead of just clicking. Yes. <laughs> the nation's capital, once again, the country's fittest city. The American College of Sports Medicine says Washington, D.C. came out on top, followed by Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Denver. The three top metro areas have more people who walk and use public transportation, along with more parks and open areas to exercise. They also had fewer cardiovascular and diabetes issues and low smoking rates. Midwestern areas like Indianapolis, Oklahoma City, and Louisville ranked last. Here in the Commonwealth, Virginia Beach and Richmond were among the top 20. Oh, nice. It makes sense. D.C., you have to walk almost everywhere yep. or use public transportation. Otherwise, you're sitting in a parking lot on the street. Right, exactly. Don't want to do that. <laughs> Time now is 510. We're going to give it today. Women across the world are sharing photos of themselves wearing flat shoes to work. This comes after a receptionist in London claimed she was sent home for not wearing heels. The employee at the center of the controversy even launched a petition requesting the UK government make it illegal for companies to require female employees to wear high heels. The petition's support means Parliament must now consider it for a debate. In the U.S., companies can enforce a dress code, but it must apply to all employees or employees within certain job categories. So she was sent home for wearing flats, which I wear almost every day. Yes. I can't believe this. I would be this. in trouble. I mean, I see getting sent home for, you know, what I'm wearing, sneakers. Um, but... Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, dressy flats but if they're dressy flats. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some people can wear heels because of a health thing. I mean, I have trouble wearing them. They're, they hurt. <laughs> it's definitely sparked a lot of conversation mm -hmm. around wow. here. Can't believe that. 
and they need to be reviewed on things like that, make sure it's all right investigated. The Department of Justice reviewing the North Charleston Police Department, what it means and how people are responding. Plus, pipeline project controversy. Why some people in Franklin County say some members of the Board of Supervisors aren't being clear about their stance on the Mountain Valley Pipeline. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on Virginia Today here on WSLS 10. I'm Jenna Zimton. And I'm Patrick McKee. And it's wet yet again. Still, I know yes. we're hoping for this to dry out for us. <laughs> we're on repeat for a while, Christina, which uh, some people like. I like the rain every day. My grass is still growing. <laughs> but, you know, we need a break and some sunshine every now and then. Right. We could see a couple of breaks of sunshine. It's possible. A former Henry County Sheriff's deputy has been sentenced for shooting his neighbor. 28-year-old Joshua Nash was sentenced to three years behind bars with the entire sentence suspended on his unlawful wounding charge. His legal troubles stem from when he shot his neighbor, Eric Eisenbach, in May of last year. Eisenbach was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Nash also faces a weapons charge. Sentencing for that has been withheld for one year. Now that means if Nash stays out of trouble, the charge could be dropped. The city of Chicago's years. The Justice Department is investigating a South Carolina police department. The department says it will conduct a two-year study into the North Charleston police force. The study comes after the city's mayor and police chief requested a review following last year's shooting death of Walter Scott. Scott was shot to death by former North Charleston police officer Michael Slager. Investigators say Scott was unarmed at the time. The Department of Justice hopes to improve accountability and community policing. You don't want to be scared when you're getting pulled over by the police who are here to protect you. So we got to eliminate the fear. For the review, investigators will consider policies and practices and then offer suggestions to improve. A new study on the county. Kroger employees could go on strike soon. Today, union members from 41 Kroger stores across the area will vote on whether to accept the company's latest contract. Union representatives have said Kroger's last best offer only provides slight wage increases and no paid sick days for thousands of workers. If the contract is not approved, union workers will then vote on whether to go on strike. The contract covers 41 stores stretching from Kingsport, Tennessee to Harrisonburg. The U.S. Labor Department's December 1st. Changes are coming to Virginia as part of its anti-drunken driving program. Ignition interlock devices require drivers to blow into them to start their cars to determine whether they've had too much to drink. Under changes Governor McAuliffe approved this week, all interlocks will have to be equipped with cameras. That means they'll be able to see if the driver gets another person to take the breathalyzer test. The new regulations were developed by the Commission on Virginia Alcohol Safety Action Program. A lot of people excited for this weekend. Thousands expected to go to the Lynchburg Air Show. Along with the large crowd comes a number of changes, though. More than 30,000 people piled into the Hill City in 2011 for the last air show. Organizers say at the time they weren't prepared for the big crowds. This year, about 3,000 parking spaces will be available at the airport, and there will be more gates. The show has also been moved to the other side of the airport and will not be visible from Ward's or Candler's Mountain Roads. This year, there will be more attractions on the ground, too. About 20 planes will be on display, ranging from World War II to now. The performers we have here uh, perform internationally, all over the country, at some of the biggest air shows uh, all, over this, uh, all over this country. Organizers say the show will go on, rain or shine. Oh, the start of hurricane. We're now more than halfway through the WSLS 10 Virginia Proud Weather Tour, covering 24 Virginia counties in 21 days. Covering a lot of ground here. Storm Team 2's Washington. A Virginia woman's obituary is getting a lot of attention on social media. That's because she mentioned Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Mary Ann Nolan's obituary says, faced with the prospect of voting for Trump or Clinton, she chose instead to pass on to heaven. The 68-year-old passed away Sunday from lung cancer. Nolan's family says her obit wasn't meant as a political statement, but rather a joke and a way to show off her sense of humor. 548 now, and school is almost out, which means more time at the pool, out in the sun, 
and trips to the beach all sound mm -hmm. wonderful. This morning, we're checking the facts on sunscreen to keep you and your family protected. A new Consumer Reports study finds that many of the sunscreens on the market aren't protecting us as well as they claim. WSLS 10's Aaron Brookshire breaks down some of the sunscreen myths. Yeah, and there really are a lot of them.